Whiskey Tango Charlie, we're gonna do something a little bit different today. It's you know typically about the juice, and uh, it's uh, never without talking about the juice. But actually, what makes the juice the juice, Charles? The barrel, baby. So uh, the barrel. Um, had a chance to do a little tour of Brown Foreman Cooperage, and uh, won't y'all come along with us? Hey folks, Whiskey Tango Charlie. We're here, Brown Foreman Cooperage, and we're getting ready to go in and take you behind the scenes as to how they put together barrels and what really makes the juice the juice, right? Come with us. Charles, you could notice right off as we uh, entered into the cooperage and uh, the way the professionalism was, the lines in the floor, the safety that took place, the, uh, the safety that we had to do prior to uh, oh. going on the tour. Uh, we're in a live manufacturing facility and, and uh, what was interesting to me is, uh, and we'll talk about it a little bit, um, the automation. Uh, a lot of this automation is uh, some robotic, but mainly all um, manual driven um, process. Still very hands-on, uh, their cooperage lots and lots of hands-on touches um, but but you watch what's going on in there and you you can tell that they've really dialed this thing in this process in you can speak yeah. to that right so uh my background for most of you that don't know is uh is nascar auto racing and and we build race cars from the ground up that go 200 miles an hour and and crash into the wall so one of the things that I gravitated to immediately walking into the cooperage, uh, Charles, was what went on in the ring making process and the roll of material that came in and, right. and how they reeled that off and right. cut it to length and, and they put a rivet to it. Right. You know, from right from the get go, looking back at the whole process, you know, going in there, there's three very distinct areas from that area from that uh, manufacturing facility. The one area of the, using the steel and making of the hoops. And so big spools of raw material uh, loading in a machine, they're, they're going through there, automatic, automated cutting, curling. Is that the right word there, dude? No, rolling. Rolling, okay, yes. rolling, okay. Yeah. <laughs> curling, right? All right, so rolling. But they roll them out, the guy's stacking up the hoops, and then they move over to uh, to rivets, right? Not welded. No, so uh, it was truly riveted together. If you think about uh, welding and riveting and, and the process that happens, uh, rivets have been used for hundreds of years as we, uh, we put materials together. Uh, and what, Charles, the, their rivet actually has a B on the end of the rivet. Beautifully, as it was stated to us, if there's no markings whatsoever, because they, they come out of the just the, the um, cooperage with no markings. What you see when you tour the rig houses, they have the stencil on them. Like whoever, whatever is done, you know, it could be Woodford, it could be a, a, a whatever the product, but it has that, that uh, distiller, distillery on there. But these, these are just barrels, but you know it's their barrel yeah, Brown and Foreman. of the rivet has the B on it. Yeah. And that was that was told to us, and I thought that was a cool touch. So we moved on from the, the ring making part of it, Charles. We, we moved into um, a separate process where they were building the head. The and, barrel heads. Yes, and actually the, uh, the um, what do you call them, dowels? So they were doweled together? Right. The pieces of wood coming together and dowels so they make a square piece, a roughly put together square, and then that was put into a machine that was automated that did the circular cut and put the beveled edge around the whole, uh, the edge of that barrel head, which is really unique. Yeah, so the, the uh, one touch process we talk about, you know, lean process, Six Sigma, something that's near and dear to my heart, 
we uh, we we watch the automation of it picking up, spinning and and turning it, putting that V into it, but also setting it down into the wax where it actually put a coating on it. So later in the process, right. it could do it could go ahead and uh, be installed into the barrel. Um, but prior to that, Charles, did you notice how they were um, charring? The, the, the guys were, yes. So it comes off of that, and the guys were loaded in this conveyor, and you look down that conveyor, and there's flame. And so the one side of that is getting the char applied to it through, through that tunnel. And then they came out of that, and uh, again, a quick spin in that wax, puts that thin, thin coating, and that, and I thought it was glue, you know, because I thought maybe they glue these things, and no, no, it's, it's basically as beeswax, and it's simply a little thin coating right on down the edge, so that it helps, helps with seating in there, and sealing that head into the barrel, so. And we moved right along into the, uh, the stave making, um, so as most people know, barrels are not square, uh, they actually have an egg type shape to them. Yeah. So uh, the way that a barrel seals to me is unbelievable. Uh, I don't understand totally how that happens, <laughs> but we watched on this machine where the guy was able to uh, make that baseball shaped uh, stave. He was right, planing those edges, planing those edges, and that machine's dialed in to the exact angle. And I guess from, from this standpoint is, is that touch thing. You know, he kind of knows that touch. So he touches and he hits the one side and he would spin the stave to the other and hit that. And then it would go into the stack as a finished product, a finished stave. Where this young man sat there <laughs> with different colored Sharpies and uh, no less <laughs> colored each and every one of those. <laughs> and, and I'm like, what? So each one has a color code of some sort that they, they understand it from the, the, the makers, the barrel razors understand. So uh, the staves are formed, they've been planed, they're, they're cut, they're, they're perfectly, they're ready for assembly. And then that came moved to another station, right? And we saw the guy actually raise a barrel. And, and that was amazing. Yeah. Wow. Like, to watch this gentleman reach into a stack of different size, oh, excuse me, it had different colors on the ends of it, <laughs> and he knew exactly what to put in. And as you watch this video and how he forms this barrel and how he, uh, he does his uh, craft, I might say, um, he's not actually using the rings that we talked about, the metal rings. If you watch right here, you can see that it is a, a piece of tubing. Right. And then, uh, after he finishes this up, Charles, he moves on. That barrel moves down the line. Moves over. And so gets that. Um, he puts those, what I call them, production rings. They're not the hoops on there at this point, but the production rings. And then it kind of moves through. And from that point, the barrels kind of go down the line and head for uh, the charring area, which was really cool. Yeah. So you think a lot of this is automated, but... The, uh, the barrel itself is rolling down the line in many cases. There were a couple instances where the barrels were actually moved on a conveyor sure. system, but most of the time the barrel was moving on its own energy as it rolled uh, through this process, Once, Charles. Yep. And then it rolled up on the, on the charring station. Goes, goes right up. The guys roll it, it kind of comes down from a gravity and the guys picking those up and setting them right into the um, uh, conveyor line. So they would set them in there and then they conveyored into this um, this little tunnel back in there. And um, and then the magic happens, right? Flames, pow, flames shoot up, big balls of fire. And you're like, you know, it's kind of mesmerizing. And 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 they've, they've got everything dialed in. So just at that right moment, flame stops and then the mist of water puts it out so charles this this particular plant that we're in this brian and foreman plant was a, a gas plant and so we can talk to this because of the tour 
but there's actually other types of uh, charring that happens sure. in different cooperages. Sure. Uh, so this is this is one more. I guess you would call it more modernization. Uh, this is a gas fired from a from a charring standpoint. The gas fire goes on there. Uh, there's the other ones that, that do more of the old school. It's the flame, so the natural fire, and, and the guys are rolling the barrels up onto over a natural fire pit right. and doing it. So, um, you know, there's different schools of thought, and, and I absolutely believe that each one imparts its own different characteristics. Um, just as you get deeper and deeper in your knowledge of bourbon, you, you absolutely know that, right? It's just It just happens, so... Yeah. So one of the more interesting, as this um, process happens and uh, off the, the line, um, this charred barrel comes, uh, something that's kind of near and dear to my heart, and I'll be a little bit selfish here, uh, one of my go-tos, my, my daily sippers, and I, I can't say that I drink every day, but when I do enjoy a, a, a bourbon, and my go-to is a, a Cooper's Craft 100. And a Cooper's Craft 100, for those who uh, don't uh, follow Brown and Foreman, it is done very similar to a Sinatra uh, Jack Daniels that right. has uh, been synonymous over the years. Sure. So taking a, you know, a process they use there, a little different process, taking a normal barrel, uh, they run a router in and they cut these grooves on the inside of the barrel kind of a deal and they groove that out and we saw that over in the Fister Center how that how that barrel looks when it's finished but um and then the cool part about that is is as as she as we were described as that that routing process um they they leave that in so one but one end of the barrel is already sealed and they do the routing process and so now the shavings and all is in the barrel they leave it because it is part of the barrel and they leave those shavings in, then it then it goes off to the distillery, and they put the put the distillery in. So, so not just uh, the time that the barrels charred, uh, the drying process of the wood uh, as the wood is dried prior to entering the cooperage, uh, the age of the wood. So you know, I don't think we have to you know educate our our uh, viewership on you know what old wood is and what new wood is, and the, right. and the difference in that growth. Um, uh, Charles, bourbon is bourbon in my mind's eye because of the wood. And I think the distillers know this uh, because everybody has their own go-to uh, cooperages, right? Mm -hmm. And they have their own unique uh, processes. Uh, but the brown form is so from the, you know, go back to the, the final, you know, the, it was kind of the final couple steps here. We go back and, and, and catch that. So the barrels had come out of that charring process and I was amazed that they just didn't seem like they were in there very long. I mean, yeah, you saw that big ball of fire, but, but when they rolled out, I was amazed at the, the heat that you could feel because they, they passed right in front of them. And you got to put your hands up there and it's like, wow. And then they moved from that and they moved right over to the station and a guy at this machine and he had the barrel head. So the barrel would set in there, the machine would do its thing, he would grab a barrel head and set it in there, and then he was applying like the hoops. Now we're putting the hoops on, finally. So the head hoop is there, he puts the head hoop, the barrel head in, the head hoop comes on, and then he applies the other two uh, hoops. And so the quarter hoop and the bilge hoop goes in place. And then they roll it over, and, and process repeats itself. Barrel head, barrel hoop, uh, quarter hoop, the bilge hoop. And then now it's a sealed barrel. This thing is closed up sealed. And we hope that it's sealed. So <laughs> as we watch that barrel roll on to the, to the next stage, uh, there was a, a lady who uh, went ahead and drilled the, the bung hole. And she put the bung hole in it. And then she went ahead and pressurized that one of the interesting things as we entered the cooperage is uh, they were uh, showing us these gentlemen that have been with them for many, many years, and they were repairing barrels. And Charles, yeah, uh, the repairing of the barrel is just as important as building the barrel 
but uh, this lady would pressurize that barrel. If it wouldn't pass a test, she would pass it along to these gentlemen, and they would go so, ahead and repair them. Kind of a unique, uh, interesting thing. So the bunghole goes in, rolls over. The guy throws this pressurization, has a little, little bit of water. Mm -hmm. They said a little bit of water goes in. But if they perceive that there's some leak that showed up, that barrel gets kicked over. It's not discarded, it's not waste, but it goes to a, a, an area where um, they can do a little repair. So they brings it over there and the guys were, again, putting pressure, finding out where the problem was. And it could be a simple, um, a little piece of, sh uh, a, sh um, a wedge of wood could go in to repair this area, or they may have to pop it apart and okay. replace an entire stave mm -hmm. and then put put the hoops and bang it back together and 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 recheck it and once that they were satisfied with it then it moved as a finished and so so you think about you know what's really interesting is you think about and you have no way of knowing this right no way of knowing but you think about those little magic barrels that have set in the rick house and for whatever reason they've produced some amazing tasting notes and was that a barrel that had a stave replaced? Who knows, right? <laughs> we'll finalize up our thing. Uh, it is a manufacturing facility. It's noisy. It's not air conditioned, folks. It's hot. Um, these guys are, are kind of working um, day in and day out and, um, and uh, saw dust. I mean, you think about it, sawing dust. I mean, it's all that kind of stuff but it, it was truly a, a very unique uh, thing of, of, a, of a tour. Um, what I really liked was the visitor center that we uh, kind of came into at the beginning. And then it kind of gives you some of the barrel in the pieces there. And it shows some of the barrels of different char levels. And, and we talk about the mm -hmm. unique grooving of the one barrel. It's really a great hands-on and you can get some perspective as to, again, more about the variables, about what it takes to get the quality juice to the final bottle in the, in the bottle, right? Hey folks, just coming out of the uh, Brown Foreman Cooperage, behind the scenes, wrapping things up. What, a, what an incredible thing there, of uh, building the barrels and doing the whole process. If you got any questions for us or like to talk, or, you know, we'd love to talk more about this, but. You know, what a great tour this was. So um, fun times, Brown Foreman Cooperage.